And so we pray for the sick and don't always see the sick healed, guys. I, I've been seeing so many things happen. When I travel, it's amazing. And I don't even pray for people. I just get to church praying. But then there's, there's things we're just not seeing. And I want to encourage you in this. Don't get real analytical with that because the people that do stop seeing anything. The people that just rested on the mercy of God will stay active and at least keep seeing something. But if you stumble over what didn't happen, you'll find your life will just shut down in that arena. For years. You, you might not even see the sick healed for 20 more years because of one thing you can't wrap your mind around. Look, if you have to understand everything, you'll never receive peace that surpasses understanding. What Jesus is saying is stay humble. Don't try to figure everything out. Just trust me and receive peace that goes beyond what you have the ability to understand. Now, if you have the need to understand everything, you'll never walk in that peace. And the trouble is, if you have to get a specific answer for everything, you'll probably come up with one for the need of having one and wonder if it's not right. So to say, why wasn't the sick healed? Why wasn't the dead raised? Well, we know it ultimately goes to some form of unbelief, whether we just haven't grown to that place. We just, I mean, come on. We're, a lot of us are still fearing death. A lot of us can't get over death. A lot of us are still grown in a lot of ways. So to think of raising the dead, I mean, sometimes we don't have faith to pray for backache. So it's, I'm not saying that in a slam. I'm saying let's just be real. We're growing. Let's keep growing. And let's believe all things are possible. Are you following me? Yeah, yeah. But to say why didn't they raise from the dead, uh, it's not a it's not a one, it's not a straight up answer. But I do know that you certainly are in authority in that position if you're praying. The dead person can't have faith. Uh, they can't agree with God. <laughs> and 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 if you have anger and unforgiveness, that's not a good idea, period, guys. So yeah, that could probably hinder some things if it's in your own heart and you're trying to move in the kingdom. In fact, let me tell you what's so dangerous. If God moves through you when you have anger and unforgiveness and moves through you to touch somebody because of his mercy and his love for the person, it'll do you great harm because you'll think him moving through you is your stamp of approval and your heart is not cool. It's very dangerous to move in the gifts of the Spirit and even pursue moving in the gifts of the Spirit without a clean and pure heart because you'll let the way God's using you determine if you're okay instead of the condition of your heart. And I've seen God move through people that were addicted on drugs. I've seen God heal the sick. I saw God get a guy laid out of a wheelchair through a man who was drug addicted and backslidden for a year and a half and didn't even pray for a year and a half. And the gospel rose up in him in the moment compassion overtook him. He prayed in an authority that some of us have never even seen in our lives. And this guy's backslidden for a year and a half. And when the lady got up and got healed, it so freaked him out, he took off and ran. Because he realized he's a drug addict. Even though he's not, he's just in trouble. So God moved through because the gifts and callings are without repentance. So if this guy said, hey, everything's cool, God's moving through me. And then took another hit of drugs because, hey, God's moving through me. That's not cool. You guys follow me? Yeah. Okay. So it's a, that's a big question. There's no... Sh Great answer other than let's all keep growing, moving forward. And if you pray for somebody with cancer and they pass, we need to find a place to see past that and be sure to get your hands on somebody else down the road that is, has cancer and don't back down. Keep growing. Say, man, I'm going to learn through the pain. I'm going to learn through the loss. I've got, I'm a little emotional right now because I, I have some losses in my life. See, people don't realize that. They see me and they think, rah, rah, Dan. I've held kids that I've, I've made covenant with and held and stayed with through the, and watched them die. But I could introduce you to ones that didn't die. Now, if I get confused and go, oh man, why they, why did they, what are we doing about it? Yeah, I'll probably not see too much after that. I don't have a strong answer for you. I just know Jesus is Lord. He said what he said. I'm going to trust him and that's why. And then that testimony you guys had your son, even the young man came up and stood. We'll see more and more of that if we don't back down. And yes, we've lost some along the way, but you know what? If we keep fighting, we're going to keep winning some too. If we get analytical, we'll probably go stalemate. I'm just being honest. I mean, I'm looking not to get a motion. I'm looking at three ladies in this room right now that I know lost husbands. 
three. I'm just scanning, and I see three. And one was real recent, the other two. And, but I see their countenances. They sit under this teaching. They understand. It doesn't mean it was easy to lose a husband. But there's a way bigger picture than right now. And thank God for the blood or it's over. Thank God for everlasting life or it's just straight up loss. And we've run in vain. We haven't run in vain. One day we're going to be standing before you and be glad that we chose humility and faith and trust in heaven. Amen? Amen. I'm just speaking to the wives and to all of us. Okay.